We are now going to go over the spreadsheet to be able to find, go through examples in order to be able to find a confidence interval for population proportions and ultimately to find the sample size needed in order to be able to conduct these particular surveys so we get a confidence interval for a population proportion. For the first study, we want to be able to have a PEPCID study where we have 74 patients with ulcers were prescribed 40 milligrams of Pepsid after eight weeks, 58 reported ulcer hearing, healing. So the first thing we want to do is obtain a point estimate for the proportion of patients with ulcers receiving Pepsid who will report ulcer healing, which means that we want to calculate the P hat. So remember, P hat is X divided by N. So in order to create the formula, we go equals, we take our X, we divide it by our N, which is 74. So the population proportion is approximately 784 thousandths. Now in order to create a confidence interval, we have two things we have to do. First, we have to verify that the population is approximately normal. And then we calculate the standard deviation for all groups of size 74 for the population proportion. So in order to be able to determine if the distribution is approximately normal, we use the formula of n times p hat times 1 minus p hat it has to be greater than or equal to 10. So we're now going to calculate this particular situation. So we take our 74 times the p hat, which we just calculated, which is 784 thousandths times, open parenthesis, 1 minus the 784 thousandths. Once we have that, we press equals. That gives us 12 and 54 hundredths. And since 12 and 54 hundredths is greater, let's write tap that correctly, greater than 10, we can say the distribution is approximately normal. And now we can continue. Next thing we need in order to be able to calculate the margin of error or the error of estimate, which is E, we have to be able to find the standard deviation of all groups of 74 patients given the point estimate is 784 thousandths. So we press equals and we want the square root. So you can press SQR. And you notice over here you have SQRT returns the square root of a number. And using the formula, we take our P hat times 1 minus r p hat, divide that by the sample size n. And since the order of operation says we multiply first and then divide, we don't have to do anything else. And that will give us approximately 48 thousandths is the standard deviation for this particular group. Now, the Normal distribution is centered around the 12 and 54 hundredths. This is our standard deviation. And basically, the population proportion is either to the left or to the right of this particular number, 12 and 54 hundredths. That's why when we calculate the confidence interval, we want both the lower limit and the upper limit. And that gives us the range of possible population proportion percentages for all patients who will ultimately report that their ulcers have healed given the 48 mil 40 milligrams of the pepsin. So now we want to go and create a 99% confidence interval. So we have our confidence level is 99%. That tells us the alpha or the amount of the area under the curve that is not in the confidence interval. So again, we have equals and we take 1 minus our confidence level, which gives us 1%. In order to use the norm S inverse to get the relative standing or the z-score, we have to take half of that because half of that area is on the left-hand tail and half of that area is on the right-hand tail. So again, we press equals and we want the area on each tail. Divide that by 2 and therefore we have 5 tenths of 1% or half of a percent of the area is below on the left tail and half is on the right tail. 
Now we want the relative standing that is associated with that. We want a positive number, so we're looking for the area on the right-hand tail. And that's why we take 1 minus the alpha divided by 2. So we go to our formulas, and I'm going to go to recently used to make it faster, and we're looking for the norm S inverse. That gives us the probability, which is the alpha divided by 2. So we have 1 minus that alpha divided by 2. And that tells us that the Z level is 2 and 576 thousandths. Now we want to be able to get our margin of error. And the margin of error we know is our Z times the standard deviation. And therefore, we have 1 123 thousandths of a percent, or 12.3 tenths percent, if you're looking in percentage-wise. Now we want to be able to find the lower limit. And the lower limit, you notice the formula here, is the p hat, which is the 784 thousandths, minus the margin of error. And that will give us 661 thousandths, or 66 and one-tenth of a percent. For the upper limit, we take our p hat plus our margin of error. And therefore, we have 90, 907 thousandths. So therefore, we say our confidence interval, writing it in interval notation, goes from 661 thousandths all the way up to 907 thousandths. Or we can say that we are 99% confident that the, whoops, my spelling is terrible, that the population proportion is between 66 and one tenth percent and ninety and seven tenths percent. Next problem, we're going to do another problem. We want to be able to determine the family values. The U.S. Today Gallup poll conducted in November 2007 says 768 of 1,024 randomly selected adult Americans aged 18 or older, stated that a candidate's position on the issue of family values are extremely or very important in determining their votes for president. Again, the very first thing we want to be able to compute is the point estimate, which is our p hat. So again, we have equals to create our formula, and we have the 768 who said that characteristic was important, divided by the sample size, which is 1,024, and that gives us about 75% of the population said that was true. Now again, in order to create a confidence interval, we have to have a distribution that is approximately normal. So again, we're going to calculate the n times the p hat times 1 minus p hat. If that number is greater than 10, we can continue. So let's go through the calculation. So we take our 1,024 times our 75 hundredths times 1 minus the 75 hundredths. And that gives us 768. And again, since 768 is greater than 10, the distribution is approximately normal. The curve is going to be centered around 768. And what we need is the standard deviation for all groups of size 1,024. So again, we're going to calculate the standard deviation. Again, we're taking the square root. You press SQRT. And therefore, that is going to be our p hat times, again, 1 minus the p hat divided by the sample size. We take the square root of that particular number. Oh, I guess we forgot. I forgot to put the percent, the parentheses at the end. And that gives us 14 thousandths of a percent, of 14 thousandths or 1 and 4 tenths of a percent. Now we want to be able to create a 98% confidence interval, so we need the relative standing for that. Again, we take the Alpha, 
because 98% is in the middle, we want to find out what is the area both on the right-hand tail and the left-hand tail. So we take 1 minus our confidence level, which gives us 2%. In order to get the Z, we want just the area on the right tail. So we take our alpha, we divide that by 2. And therefore, 1% of the area is on the right tail. In order to get the relative standing, again, we go to our norm S inverse. And the probability is going to be 1 minus that. Because remember, on the table, looking at the 98% or that particular area, we're going to get 0.99. And we take 1 minus that, and it's 2.326. Again, we're, so we're 2 and approximately 33 hundredths of a standard deviation above the mean on the right side. In order to get the lower limit, we take our p hat minus the, oh, one minute, I forgot to calculate the margin of error. So the margin of error is going to be our z times the, standard deviation. And now, given that particular information, so we're looking at approximately 3 and 1 tenth percent for a margin of error. So our p hat minus e will give us the lower limit. And again, equals the p hat plus e gives us the upper limit. And basically what we're saying is that the confidence interval in interval notation is going to be anywhere from 719 thousandths up to 781 thousandths. Or we can say we are 98% confident that the population proportion is between 71 and 9 tenths percent and 78 and 1 tenth percent who think family values are important or extremely important in order to be able to cast their vote for president. Well, now that we've done that, we really want to be able to determine the sample size. How do we know?